Hello again, everyone. Todd Michael Putnam here from D&D Creative Table Designs, bringing you another adventure table idea. And this one is the Goblin King's Cave. The Goblin King's Cave. Um, and it's both an indoor and outdoor adventure. Uh, split the table a little bit. Uh, very simple on this side of the river. Of course, there's a river bisecting the table. Uh, and on this side of the river, there are goblins, of course, that are riding on their war dogs uh, that the uh, players will eventually encounter as they're trudging along trying to get uh, to the Goblin King cave itself. Depending on how much time and stuff you have, I also added in uh, a uh, owlbear and her two cubs. So they uh, are there, and of course she'll be quite uh, quite defensive of her cubs. On the other hand, owlbear uh, skin rugs are, are all the rage in the main town, so they're worth uh, a significant amount of money uh, if they can handle that. In any event, those are probably the two, uh, the, uh, two encounters that they would have uh, while tra traveling through the woods. Um, you could also put other things in. You could always put a nymph or something in the, in the small pond. Uh, you could have uh, hawks or other creatures like that that may try and come down. Uh, this is obviously a low-level adventure with uh, being against goblins. But uh, the next obstacle will be them coming up across the, uh, the raging river. And the only way to get across it is to hop across those three rocks uh, that you can see, uh, actually four rocks. So you can see the with the uh, water spray on the uh, left-hand side of the rocks, which way the river itself is flowing, the way the current is flowing, that helps tell the characters where it is. And then they would go and basically hop from, from the shoreline to the rock, to rock to rock. Uh, and then unfortunately though, Watching that side of the river are some goblins with bows, and so it's not just a matter of making dexterity checks across the slippery rocks, but of course also of not getting shot uh, by the goblins and either returning fire with magic or ranged weapons uh, as they try and make their way across. Uh, but there's only three of them, and they're goblins, so they're probably relatively quick and easy to kill, um, but it just makes it a little bit more dangerous, and of course if somebody falls off and falls into the water, They've got an opportunity to maybe try and go up onto the side over here or catch themselves on this large rock over here. Uh, otherwise, they might be washed further downstream uh, and it could be uh, several minutes or hours before they got back in contact with the party again, assuming they didn't drown from the rushing waters. Uh, and then eventually when you make it to the other side of the river, there is areas to explore on the other side over here, uh, which you can always put uh, additional things in there. But uh, for me, I just had it go straight to behind this, this um, shrub is going to be the entrance to the goblin's cave. And we'll see that there's a whole lower floor all along around here where the goblins, uh, the goblin common areas exist. Uh, and you see a number of uh, small campfires, three campfires, uh, where the goblin are basically cooking rat meat or anything else that they've uh, managed to kill. But uh, as you go around to the side here, you see that there's uh, some uh, a natural stairway up uh, that uh, gets them to this level up here, which is like a good uh, 10 or so feet above the, um, uh, the rest of the cave floor. And you can see this is where I've got the characters right there. I actually built uh, a bridgeway going across the entire Goblin Common, common area from this upper structure across several stalactite and stalagmite, uh, stalactite, um, stalagmite, excuse me, stalagmites uh, that go up from the ground, go across it, and then eventually get them over to this piece over here, uh, which is the uh, epicenter of the, and you can see it a little bit, uh, a little bit better here as the, um, this is where it traces across the top. The, uh, the cave stuff blends very well together. So, but this gives you a little bit better idea, if you can see it, of uh, where the characters would have to go across. And if they hadn't already wiped out the caves below, then those creatures, uh, those goblins, would be able to fight and throw spears and stuff at them from down below. And if they went to the ones down below first, the goblins, the three goblins that are up on top, would be raining uh, spears and javelins down at them from up above. So the, the goblins have that to help work out their... Um, work out their strategy 
uh, and uh, defend their king, of course. Uh, and then once it gets to the other side over here, uh, there's a few more goblin defenders on the inside here. And it brings it around to uh, stairways going up. And that brings it to the goblin king's actual chamber where he's got a couple of guards. Uh, and he also has a goblin alchemist who can throw like little firebombs at the players uh, as the goblin king himself sits there and uh, laughs maniacally as his, uh, his uh, henchmen uh, try and deal with the adventurers. Uh, and uh, of course, because they're goblins, they're not very nice creatures. Uh, these guys have a small pit down below uh, the, uh, the goblin king himself's lair, uh, a little drop-off pit, and it is filled with three small black puddings. And what they do is uh, anybody they don't like, any goblins that get out of line, any prisoners that, uh, that they don't have a, a need for or uh, anything like that, they throw them into this pit and the, uh, the black pudding will, uh, will take care of them. And you can see there's a number of bones and skulls down there, uh, the remnants of uh, showing the evidence of the Goblin King's uh, treachery and wicked nature. So there it is. That is the Goblin King's cave. Um, it's got multiple levels to it. Uh, most of this is Dwarven Forge, but where does the elevation come from? You guessed that it comes from Todd Tiles. Uh, several 3D printed Todd tiles that you can get absolutely free to download for free. Obviously, it's going to cost you uh, your, uh, for whatever it costs you to get a 3D printer and uh, your, your filament to go with it. But the Todd tiles themselves are absolutely free. I, I had them custom design. You can print out as many as you want. There's 4x4s. There's 2x8s. Um, they're all two inches high. Uh, and there's a number of other uh, various types of tiles that are on there as well. Just go to thangs.com t-h-a-n-g-s uh, period dot com and uh, you can just do a search for Todd Tiles and uh, two words Todd Tiles and uh, that'll bring up the whole list of all the tiles that are available uh, for you to download and use absolutely free so that's where the elevation comes from the caves themselves are from Dwarven Forge it's their cavern sets and um, some of their cavern accessory set stuff in order to make the, uh, the bridge that's, again, that view doesn't look so good. You can kind of see the bridge a little bit better if you come over here. Actually looking at it from the top down, you can see the bridge uh, much better, ironically. So, because you go across and just get that, um, you do it that way, you get a little bit of a parallax effect uh, scrolling, uh, and that helps you see uh, the bridge a little bit more clearly. Otherwise, it kind of blends in uh, pretty good. So... That is the, the caves themselves. The, uh, this particular battle mat is P-Works Wargaming. Uh, check them out. Uh, they've got some really good battle mats. I also use, um, if I needed a slightly bigger area, I have two Wiz Kids Icon of the Realms uh, Plains mats or Grassy Plains mats. Those are fantastic also. And those come with squares on them. So if you like gridded movement in the outdoors, uh, you would probably be better off looking for the Wiz Kids Icon of the Realms Grasslands mat. Uh, and then um, more Dwarven Forge is going to be these forest banks, these guys right here all along the edge of the, I'm using them as river banks, uh, but they are, they're called forest transition tiles, I believe. Uh, and then uh, the rocks and trees and bushes are all from Monster Fight Club. Uh, I use them all the time. They do not come, oh, and the pond is uh, all Monster Fight Club. Uh, they only come in green and um, green and orange, but I had some of them repainted up yellow and a darker, you know, reddish orange type color just to add some variety to it. Uh, and I had some of the, uh, the bushes also repainted uh, like an orange color because they're currently, they're only coming in this. Uh, whenever their ice land wilds, their ice wild set ships, those have some, uh, some autumn bushes already repainted. Uh, in the orange, but uh, this was well before that shipped. I'm still waiting for mine to arrive. So uh, I just repainted some of the green ones up and uh, got my autumn stuff a little bit ahead of schedule. So that's it. Um, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the channel and you enjoy the content. Uh, if you like the ideas for the adventures or if um, you're just learning something about how to build systems uh, and how to, uh, how to translate your adventures into 3D actual designs. Uh, then I appreciate you giving me a like and subscribe and uh, leaving comments below. 
I uh, appreciate you checking it all out and I will see you next adventure. Take care. Bye.